Today I'm in Huntsville, Alabama, and I'm headed over to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. And that'll give me just enough time to address the elephant in the room. That being the quality of the video. Um, somehow, I mean, I don't know, I must have been having a stroke or something. When I copied the files off of my action camera, I copied the low resolution files from the camera over to my laptop rather than the actual mp4s if you don't know many of these action cameras i know at least the dji osmo action 4 that i'm using here to record this footage as well as my um, uh, gopro both do a low resolution version of whatever it is that you're filming in order to allow you to review the footage on the device itself which has a tiny little screen where something like 4k wouldn't really matter and uh, so it's it's able to play it fast and uh, on a on a smaller uh, screen and uh, typically what I do is um, in the file manager on my Windows laptop, I set it to uh, group the files on the SD card by file type. And so I get uh, separate groupings for MP4 files as well as the LRF files. The LRF files being the low resolution version of the file. And somehow I apparently just copied off the um, LRFs and deleted the MP4s. Um, so I apologize for the quality of this video. Uh, these LRF files are like 720 um, rather than the 4K that I was actually recording the uh, main files with. So anyway, I uh, am going to change my download procedures such that in the future I'll just download everything to my computer and um, then go ahead and sort things out there uh, rather than uh, in, the, uh, in the copy process from the SD card onto the computer. Um, yeah, so... Uh, that's a bummer, and I, it, of course it's, uh, it, it gives you a bad experience, um, but um, think about uh, me uh, long term here, a, 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 a pretty significant um, event, uh, you know, a visit to, a visit to a, a very cool facility. Uh, I will never be able to get back those uh, 4K files uh, from, so it's kind of a bummer. Um, yeah, so, anywho, sorry for the poor quality video. So here we are arriving at uh, the um, U.S. Space and Rocket Center. And uh, this is a, I want to say it's a Wednesday. And uh, so you can kind of get a feel for uh, how easy it is to park here. It was really just take an exit off the interstate and then uh, drive down a short little road and pull in. Uh, that's Space Camp, by the way, right in front of me there. And on the right is the, uh, the visitor area where you can go through all of their exhibits and uh, see all of their displays. But yeah, right in front of me here is Space Camp. So this is actually a part of the Redstone Arsenal. It's where uh, Warner von Braun and his team of rocketeers uh, came to uh, to basically get us uh, off to the moon. Um, the Redstone Arsenal includes the Marshall Space Flight Center and uh, Space Camp and um, the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. This particular shot I took on my smartphone. So this is probably the best um, resolution you're going to get. And again, I can't be any more sorry. 
Uh, this is the main hall after you've ticketed up and you uh, come into the uh, into the show area uh, where you can see all sorts of uh, interesting rockets and displays. Uh, after walking in, I kind of turned around and noticed that uh, there were a bunch of spacesuits back there. Uh, but I was uh, captivated a little bit by the Artemis uh, video playing there. But then went back and, for whatever reason, walked backwards uh, across the uh, row of spacesuits from the shuttle all the way back to the Mercury program. So that's what uh, all of these are for. Cool stuff. Vintage. This is the uh, pressure vessel for the uh, new uh, Boeing Starliner. So this is kind of like uh, the outside of the inside, right? This is like uh, a house before the siding is put on. So you're seeing kind of the bones of the, um, of the living area of the spacecraft. And uh, it's kind of interesting to see the geometry that they use to provide rigidity and uh, its ability to hold pressure uh, in, uh, in the vacuum of space. Some signatures there of the folks who apparently designed uh, the pressure vessel. Unfortunately, though, you can't really get a look inside. Uh, we'll get around to the other side and you'll see where the hatch is, but, uh, you know, there's nothing that you can see inside. It's just closed off, but it's kind of cool none nonetheless. So there was this building and there was uh, another building we'll get to in a, in a moment uh, that has uh, a uh, ISS mock-up in it. And there's also a planetarium. I watched two different planetarium shows. One was our place in space, which was basically a tour of the uh, solar system, and the other was on the James Webb Telescope and the cool science it's doing. So here's that uh, mock-up of the uh, Payload Operations Center, but in the background of the ISS. Some of this particular area, I was told, is really for the folks in space camp. So you had to be uh, enrolled to get to parts of this. And uh, here I am uh, coming up on the toilet, and uh, I, I just have to kind of laugh at uh, that uh, with the realization that, uh, you know, I live in an RV, and so one of the things that uh, RVers tend to talk a lot about are their, uh, their toilets. I mean, <laughs> how, how do you deal with... Uh, uh, with uh, human waste in uh, in an RV and whatnot, and uh, that's uh, also obviously a concern when you're up in space. But this was a very cool uh, uh, mock-up of the International Space Station, giving you a view of uh, things like the personal space that the astronauts have to sleep and work in privately, maybe communicate with loved ones back home. And uh, all of the other working environments. I don't think they have spiral staircases in uh, space, though. I don't know what that was about. That's for us uh, earthbound souls who have to climb up to uh, things that are higher. But yeah, this was actually kind of a complete little uh, look at the ISS. And its various work areas.
Now stepping outside now, I uh, decided to go take a walk around the uh, the rocket garden, if you will, and uh, see everything they had outside. A lot of stuff to look at from the outside, so not all just inside. The Space Shuttle Pathfinder is what they're calling it, I guess. Uh, it should be on display here, but apparently it's being refurbished. And I think it's really just uh, some sort of a mock-up. I, I really have no belief that this was uh, a real space shuttle um, uh, thing. I, I, I think it truly was just a mock-up. But you can see all the uh, barriers and whatnot uh, out here. Uh, I think I was ca captivated by the airplane flying by there. <laughs> Squirrel! Uh, but yeah, I, I really have my uh, questions as to whether or not uh, the Pathfinder was anything that was uh, intended to be um, in line to be uh, space-ready hardware. Uh, the tanks and the uh, and this, uh, the the main uh, shuttle fuel tank here and the um, solid rocket uh, uh, boosters, I, I think, were probably. Uh, the real deal. Uh, there's a T-38 uh, jet trainer here in front of us. I know a lot of astronauts uh, fly those and that's the trainer that uh, uh, at least the Air Force uses uh, for pilots and uh, it's it's almost like a personal aircraft I think for, for some pilots. They, uh, they just kind of tend to fly those things around a lot. There's a great view of the uh, main tank and the uh, solid rocket boosters uh, there. Again, a lot of work-related stuff going on in the area. Uh, construction cones and barriers and whatnot. So that was kind of detracted a little bit from the experience. But uh, I guess you got to get stuff done at some point. Um, I, at least I'm glad to see that stuff is being done uh, in order to preserve and maintain the whole show here. I think it's really important. Unfortunately, you can't really read uh, many of those placards uh, because of the low resolution files. Sorry about that. That jet there uh, that we're just looking at and now turning away from was apparently used by astronauts as a shuttle simulator. I think if you cut the engines, it falls out of the sky like a brick, just like the um, space shuttle does. And, uh, yeah, that view just never gets old. Uh, looking at the uh, full-stack Apollo Saturn V, that's quite a thing. The uh, moon display here, I, uh, I don't know, it looked a little contrived, frankly. Um, for instance, the gold foil that you would expect would adorn the descent module of the LEM here was just painted orange. It was not the gold foil that you would expect to see on it. But, um, yeah, I think uh, some better realism could have been uh, injected into this uh, thing. And and the disrepair here going on. I mean, look, look at these uh, uh, railings. They, they look like they've just been ignored for decades. Uh, there were a number of other rockets hanging around, which, you know, I, I don't know, they probably have more military um, uh, uses than, than space, but... Um, and this uh, submarine thing, it looks like uh, the yellow submarine from, uh, from the Beatles. I, I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. Some sort of a deep sea pressure vessel, I guess, but... Anyway, we're coming up on the um, Skylab mock-up, which is actually quite impressive. Um, and yet, uh, uh, I, I look at the uh, command and service module here and think, uh, I don't think that they really looked like that. I think this, again, looks a little bit contrived. The uh, service module portion of the command and service module uh, uh, pair always was that um, 
uh, metallic uh, silver looking color um, and so why this one is white I'm really not sure and as we kind of walk around it a little bit I think you get the sense that it doesn't really look like any of the models you may have put together as a kid um, I, I know I did anyway I was kind of a little bit of a space nerd uh, back in my childhood but yeah I mean the back of this uh, service module just does not look at all like it's kind of real but I don't know what do I know um, Still, uh, just to get a sense of the scale of all of that whole chapter of our exploration of space was kind of cool. This is an Atlas booster, um, similar to the one that launched John Glenn into his orbital flight, which sadly didn't uh, last as long as it uh, should have. He only made it to th three to four orbits before he had to come back down due to some worries over whether or not the heat shield had uh, become detached. But yeah, there's the booster that got him to orbit. I mean, not that one in particular, but one just like it. Uh, we had a lot of problems with those boosters too, just blowing up. So John Glenn was uh, really quite a um, brave soul <laughs> to go and sit on top of one and uh, get launched into uh, orbit. Of course they had the the uh, launch abort system that would have uh, pulled his spacecraft clear of uh, an exploding vehicle, one would hope anyway. Again, a lot of construction cones and stuff going on kind of detracting from the uh, from the experience. Plenty of um, rocket engines hanging around both here and at the American Space Museum that uh, I uh, presented to you a couple of videos back. Shuttle engines, Saturn uh, engines, they're big, just massive, and uh, they develop a lot of thrust. That's how you get to orbit, or that's how you get to the moon. Uh, on top of one of those things. Again, this view just never gets old. I don't know what to say. It's <laughs> you, you'll see it again. Yeah, they tend to be there ten minutes early. Uh, behind uh, this uh, uh, Saturn V full uh, stack is the uh, Saturn Hall, which has a bunch of stuff in it too. And we'll be looking at that coming right up. After one more view of the full stack Apollo Saturn V. Again, I just couldn't get over the thing was just standing right there. Inside the uh, Saturn V hall, uh, one of the initial displays you'll see is a uh, timeline uh, for Huntsville's evolution from just kind of a quiet town in um, Alabama to Rocket City and uh, apparently the city of Huntsville grew immensely through that period so kind of cool to see that uh, and uh, you can actually read that <laughs> sorry Getting low resolution files. Um, mercury. Uh, so there, here's a, a. This looks like about a quarter scale mercury there. Um, and I apologize for it. Well, I don't know why I should apologize for it. Uh, maybe Huntsville's uh, you know, uh, Space and Rocket Center should apologize for all of the reflections coming off of the glass. It'd be great if that just if that glass just wasn't even there. Then you could really see through it. Get a much better visual on the inside of a mercury capsule. This one was a procedures trainer, apparently, so you know, kind of a simulator for the astronauts in the early days. It says Langley Research Center on the side of it, so I suspect that that's actually a real deal. 
And here is uh, a Mercury, uh, I'm sorry, a Gemini uh, capsule, uh, spacecraft. I don't, I don't like the word uh, capsule, I don't know why, but uh, it just seems kind of, I don't know, crude. Uh, a Gemini spacecraft, our two-seater, and again, the reflections make it difficult to make out all of the instrumentation inside, but it uh, it's uh, pretty cool in there. If you can imagine sitting in one of those things for two weeks, I guess, is, was the longest duration flight we, uh, we threw up there in a Gemini uh, spacecraft. Here's another slightly more complete uh, version. The other one kind of chopped off right above the, uh, the control panels. But uh, this is uh, more of a uh, full look at a Gemini capsule spacecraft. And uh, as we are in Saturn V hull, there is a Saturn V sitting in here. Not, a, not only is there one standing out in the uh, Saturn V courtyard, but there's one here inside the building as well. This one horizontal, and I'll walk from one end to the other for you. And uh, you can kind of see some of the uh, some of the kids walking around uh, down on the ground there, just for some scale. The thing truly is massive. Cool thing about this display is that they um, have uh, gaps in between the stages, so you can uh, see the engines of the next stage and uh, see how it coupled to the uh, previous stage. So that's all really very cool. And this looks a lot more like the uh, models I used to build as a kid of the Saturn V. So I kind of almost feel like this probably was at one point uh, flight ready hardware that uh, just uh, uh, didn't need to be used. Uh, we ended the programs uh, prematurely and um, so there's uh, probably some stuff left over that was definitely headed in the direction of space but got uh, landlocked um, instead. This particular ring we will see uh, uh, in uh, just a moment as the uh, the brains of the uh, Saturn V located just at the top of the third stage and before the bay that stored the lunar module. This was quite a uh, treat uh, to see. This is the actual Apollo 16 command module our three-seater that uh, took uh, three astronauts to the moon a total of six times and put uh, 12 humans on the lunar surface. Apollo 16 being the last of those missions. So this is not only flight ready hardware but it is hardware that uh, has been to the moon and back. So that was very cool to see. I wonder how much processing they actually did to the uh, spacecraft uh, upon, uh, you know, return to Earth and prior to being set up as a display here. Looks like it may have been cleaned or whatnot. It would have been really cool if they'd have just left all of the scorched uh, marks on it and whatnot. Uh, no, I don't, and I don't know, maybe this is exactly what it looked like. Uh, after its fiery re-entry through Earth's atmosphere. Not sure. There is definitely some of the heat shield missing. I don't know if that happened upon re-entry or maybe during processing uh, transport here to Huntsville. Not really sure. Well, yeah, that's a national treasure right there. The uh, moon buggies that they had here, there's a couple of them. I don't know. They, they look to be kind of um, uh, mock-ups and, and not necessarily the exact hardware that they would have sent to the moon. 
the uh, uh, lunar module that we're going to see here uh, coming up does look far more authentic than the one out in the uh, courtyard and that this one certainly does have the gold foil uh, wrapping on the de on the descent module and I think this particular uh, lunar rover looks a little more like one of the real deals but uh, yeah it's uh, very cool to stand next to something like that and get a sense of the actual scale don't know what the watch is about didn't read. <laughs> it's a lot to read, a lot to see. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I'm not showing you in this video. So like if you're going to Huntsville, you definitely owe it to yourself to stop at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center and actually get a uh, an eyeball view of this stuff rather than this low resolution video stuff. Hey, this was actually kind of fun to see. There's an actual moon rock that was brought back from the moon. Uh, some of the names of the people involved with that, I guess. And, uh, and yeah, a rock from the moon. Not something you see every day. As a matter of fact, it's the first time I've seen one at all. Apollo 12, so our second flight to the moon. So I mentioned uh, as I was walking along the entire length of the Saturn V, as we were nearing the top, at what would be the top end if it was standing vertical, that we would see the uh, that p the particular ring that uh, was uh, up there. Uh, again, this is the the brains of the Saturn V. All of the uh, launch control computers uh, that guided the Saturn V to orbit and uh, apparently then also was instrumental in the lunar injection burn that uh, took the three astronauts uh, aboard the Apollo spacecraft out of Earth orbit and uh, headed out towards the moon. Uh, that was all controlled by the equipment uh, here in this ring and um, so very cool to see uh, that stuff as well as to actually get a look at the electronics of the day back there in the 60s uh, and um, you know how they had to uh, put this stuff together uh, they, the the far more crude electronics of the uh, of the day back in the 60s. Of course, they they used larger scale semiconductors uh, in an effort to try and uh, ensure that uh, radiation uh, didn't affect them as much as maybe the micro scale or nano scale uh, electronics that we use today uh, might be affected. Uh, so that's uh, kind of an interesting perspective. I didn't get that here. I did. I read that somewhere else, but very cool to think of. And with that, it was about time to go ahead and get uh, on the road and head back, find a place to the spend port. the night. I was leaving Alabama the uh, next morning, and uh, so it actually turned out to be a Walmart here in uh, Huntsville. So. Thanks to the Walmart on uh, University Avenue in Huntsville, uh, you were a good stay. I actually stayed there two nights. I typically would not do that at a Walmart, but uh, I arrived in the area and then I came over here to see the uh, U.S. Space and Rocket Center, uh, spent the entire day there, and then went back and uh, got a little rest before heading off to a state park in Tennessee for a couple of days but uh, very cool to drive along the interstate here and uh, find the miles, Saturn V uh, just standing Park alongside the internet or, <laughs> alongside the internet standing alongside the interstate and uh, very nicely lit in the uh, 
in the fading daylight uh, so that'll be coming up here pretty soon hey thanks a lot for watching this uh, video as poor quality as it was I, I am so so sorry that uh, this happened I was horrified to find that all I had left of this um, incredible experience was low resolution files just uh, I was just crushed but um, that uh, notwithstanding uh, it would be super wonderful if you would give this video a like and uh, if content like this is um, uh, something that you enjoy it would be just absolutely awesome if you would subscribe to the channel at least that way uh, YouTube will continue to let you know that uh, I'm still posting videos and uh, you'll get to see the next one and uh, we're getting so close to that uh, magic uh, number of subscribers where YouTube says, uh, yeah, we could actually start uh, sending you a little gas money so that you could continue your adventures and continue posting cool videos. So <laughs> uh, there's, there's your uh, reason to uh, uh, subscribe if you would like to. Uh, certainly not uh, anything you must do but I would love it if you would and uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video Continue on Alabama 255 North for two miles.